Hello everyone, this is TCB ASMR here. In this video, I will be predicting UFC 291, which is this Saturday, July 29th, uh, in Salt Lake City. So, before we get into the predictions, I will uh, address the elephant in the room. I believe it's almost been about a month since I've last uploaded. Um, I apologize for that. Um, just have had a lot of things and uh, kind of got out of my groove but I'm back and uh, we'll be back to daily uploads at least one video a day if not more um, as I was doing in the past anyways let's get into the first bout or fight of the main card of course as always I only do the main cards or the main card because um, even though uh, these fights are important as well, and, uh, you know, some of these actually have ranked fighters, such as Derek Lewis, who is on a bit of a losing streak, um, and he's not even favorited in this fight against uh, Rogerio de Lima. Um, and you have other important fighters, like Gabriel Bonfim, uh, who's pretty talented, so... But usually stick to the main card. Uh, so the first fight of this main card is Michael Chiesa, who is currently ranked number 12 in the welterweight, welterweight uh, excuse me, division. Uh, he is facing off against Kevin Holland in this fight. Uh, Kevin Holland is the favorite. He is minus 145. Michael Chiesa is plus 125. Uh, of course, Kevin Holland did lose his last fight, or excuse me, win his last fight against... Santiago Ponzinibbio, I believe that went to a decision, um, I don't remember exactly, but he did win, um, and then Michael Chiesa lost his last fight against Sean Brady, um, I don't remember how that one ended either, I can't remember if that was a decision, or, um, he got knocked out or submitted, uh, but anyways, this should be a pretty good fight, um, Kevin Holland does have the longer reach, by a decent bit, by about five and a half inches. Um, Kevin Holland has some pretty long arms. Um, and then, of course, before the Ponza Nibio win, he was knocked out by Stephen Thompson, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, and he lost to Hamzat Shemaev. Or Shemaev. Um, two pretty tough matchups, so um, you, know, you can't really... I'm not going to say you can't fault him, because... You should go out there and try to win, which I'm sure he did, but um, it's just two very tough matchups. You know, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson is a seasoned vet and a very good striker, better striker than Holland, of course, and then Hamzat is just a, a monster, uh, and he, he dealt with Kevin Holland pretty well. Um, and Michael Chiesa also lost to Vincente, Vincente Luque. Um, so, yeah, Vicente Luque uh, by submission. And, okay, the Sean Brady fight was a unanimous decision. And then he, the, his last win came in 2021 against Neil Magny. And his last fight in general was in 2021. So it's it's been a little while uh, since he has last fought, um, which, of course, comes into, into play as well when thinking about this matchup because Kevin Holland fought... I want to say on the Adesanya card, um, I believe it was on the Adesanya card at, what was that, UFC 287, um, let's see, I don't know why I just want to show it, um, I want to say it was on, yeah, UFC 287, um, the Adesanya versus Pajeda second fight or rematch in the UFC. Um, and, of course, Pereira is fighting on this card. But for this fight, I'm going to go with Kevin Holland to win. Um, I think stylistically they are pr pretty different. Um, of course, Michael Chiesa is mainly a uh, a grappler. Um, as you can see, he I don't think he's ever won by knockout or, or, uh, or TKO. Most of his wins come from either a decision or a submission. Um, his average fight time is a little bit lower than Kevin Holland's, but I believe he has less fights than Kevin Holland. Yeah, he, he does have less fights. It uh, doesn't land that many significant strikes per minute, uh, much less than Kevin Holland. Uh, but 
then of course he grapples a lot more uh, securing about 3.39 takedowns on average per 15 minutes and uh, his takedown accuracy is pretty solid as well 54 54 percent pretty solid takedown defense as well um, and then his submission average is at about one submission per 15 minutes uh, but like i said i am going to go with kevin holland uh, i think he either wins by decision or knockout in the first round next we have tony ferguson versus bobby green Tony Ferguson is currently on a five-fight losing streak. Um, I think it's five fights. It's either four or five. And then he had that medical stoppage against Cowboy Cerrone, where he uh, he punched Cowboy Cerrone after the bell rang and uh, and completely shut his eye. So that was a uh, that was interesting. And then Bobby Green, um, I don't remember what his last fight was exactly um i do remember him getting absolutely crushed by well not crushed but he got slept against uh, against drew dober but i believe that was a little while ago um unfortunately it's not really loading right now uh, because my internet is slow where i am in my house but uh but that's okay uh, bobby green is heavily favored in this fight and uh, i mean it makes sense tony ferguson I really think this should probably be his last fight. I mean, um, he just has been looking so bad or has just looked so bad in his previous fights against Gaethje. He just looked like a shell of himself. Um, of course, he got brutally knocked out against Michael Chandler. Um, lost to Charles. Um, and then he lost to Dariush as well. Um, so just just not having a good go of things for Tony, but um, I really think he should have retired after that Michael Chandler fight because that was a rough knockout. That was just brutal. The front kick to the face. and uh, Yeah, so I love Tony, but uh, don't have a lot of faith that he will win this fight. I think Bobby Green will win this fight. Uh, don't think Bobby Green will knock him out, but um, I think Bobby Green will dominate him probably for the entire three rounds. Next, speaking of Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, he is facing off against Michel Pajeda, uh, the probably one of the most entertaining fighters to watch in the UFC as it finally loads with Bobby Green. Um, let's see. Uh, could not continue against Jared Gordon, and he lost his other two fights, which one was against Drew Dober, where he got slept or put to sleep, and the other one was against Islam Makashev, uh, which kind of makes sense that Bobby Green lost because, uh, of course, Islam Makashev is now the lightweight champion. Um, so, you know, a bit, bit unfortunate for Bobby Green there, but... Uh, yeah, back to this Thompson versus Pajeda fight. Uh, Pajeda, very, very dynamic striker. Um, very hard to predict, but so is Steven Thompson. Uh, so I think this will make for a great matchup, especially since both of them are pretty good strikers. I would definitely say Thompson, or Thompson is better than a pretty good striker. He's an elite striker, one of the best in the UFC. Uh, of course, he is getting up there in age. I believe Pajeda is only like this would load. I believe Pajeda is only like 26 or 27. Uh, I might be off, but I do know he's younger than Thompson. Uh, Steven Thompson is like 40, 41. Um, so definitely up there in age. has been around the UFC for a while. Uh, he is ranked number 7 and Pajeda is ranked number 15. I believe Pajeda, uh, he just beat uh, I can't remember who he just beat just he won his last fight um, and Stephen Thompson won his last fight as well I believe I believe this last his last fight was the one against Holland uh, I wish it would load but um, it's okay but uh Pajeda is more than just a striker of course Stephen Thompson can grapple but uh, that's not his strong suit Pajeda is a little bit more well-rounded than Stephen Thompson, but Stephen Thompson, of course, has fantastic uh, takedown defense. 
Um, okay, yeah, his last win was against Kevin Holland in December. Uh, so, what was that, like seven? But yeah, about seven, eight months ago. Um, so, and he lost against Bilal Muhammad and Gilbert Burns, two very, uh, very difficult fighters, especially for Thompson's fighting style. You have Gilbert Burns, who is very complete, um, great all-around fighter, and Bilal Muhammad is pretty well-rounded as well. And of course, Bilal Muhammad ended up beating Gilbert Burns a little while ago. So, um, yeah, for this fight, uh, Stephen Thompson is favored. By one, minus 165. Pajeda is plus 140. I think we will see some crazy stuff from Pajeda, but uh, as we saw in his last fight, he kind of only did the crazy stuff for the most part when he knew he had the fight kind of locked up almost, or when he knew he was winning the fight. Uh, and I think he's gotten a lot smarter. Or he's definitely gotten a lot smarter uh, about the way he implements, you know, the crazy uh, acrobatics into his uh, into his game plan, uh, the capoeira kicks and, uh, you know, the Superman punches and the kicks off the, you know, running up off the wall, all that takes a lot of energy, um, so I don't think he'll gas out early, and I think he'll try to take Thompson down at some point in the fight, but I do think that if it stays mainly on the feet, I think Stephen Thompson will uh, will beat him. If it goes to the ground, it could definitely get interesting, and I could see Pajeda, uh, you know, possibly dominating the fight if he's able to take Stephen Thompson down. But I am gonna go with Stephen Thompson to win this fight. Um, I know it just seems like I'm picking everyone who is favored by the odds, but uh, I do actually think. All these people will win. All these fighters will win. Um, but like I said, I do think that this fight could go either way. Uh, but we'll see. But I right now I have Stephen Thompson by decision. So now we have the co-main, I believe. Um, Jan Blahovitz versus or Blahovitz versus Alex Pajeda big lightweight fight um, and I believe this is for the vacant lightweight championship uh, or light heavyweight not lightweight uh, light heavyweight belt because Jamal Hill just tore his Achilles and uh, and vacated the belt so he gave up the belt um, so I do believe that this is actually for the light heavyweight bout uh, Alex Pajeda of course is the number two middleweight not light heavyweight but still a very good fighter. Um, the odds for, for this fight are actually pretty funny. Blahovic is minus 120. Peta is minus 110. Um, so Peta a little bit better odds. But, I mean, I agree with the odds. This is a very evenly matched fight. It will be very interesting to see uh, each fighter's game plan coming into this fight. We have never seen Alex Peta at middleweight at middleweight, or not middleweight, light heavyweight, excuse me, um, and of course, Blahovic's last fight was, again, for the light heavyweight championship, uh, when that belt was vacated previously uh, against Ankalev, and that ended up being a draw, a split decision, um, so pretty anticlimactic at the end of that fight, but now we get to see him fight again. Um, and if this isn't for the belt, um, then whoever wins this is, is next up for a title shot. Uh, of course, Blahovic, super heavy hands, a ton of power. Same for Pajeda. He had a ton of power at middleweight. He's only going to have more at light heavyweight. Uh, so, like I said, it should be very interesting to see what happens. Um... I think I'm going to take Blahovic. Blahovic, just because we've seen him at light heavyweight. And that's really my only reasoning. Uh, but I really do think this fight could go either ways. And I think someone's going to get knocked out. Or someone's going to get finished. So I'm going to go with Jan Blahovic. 
to finish Alex Pajeda in the fourth round by, uh, I usually don't predict it by any punch or anything, but I think, I think Pajeda gets caught with another overhand, um, either an overhand or an uppercut, we'll say that, so now we move on to the main fight of the night, Dustin Poirier. Uh, who is ranked number two in the lightweight division versus Justin Gaethje, who is ranked number three in the lightweight division. This, of course, is a rematch of a fight that happened, I want to say around three, four years ago, maybe, where Dustin Poirier was getting he was getting his legs beat up. Gaethje was just carving uh, Poirier's legs and was getting beat up pretty bad, but Dustin had rocked Gaethje, and then in the fourth round, Dustin landed, I want to say it was either a hook or a straight that wobbled Gaethje pretty bad, and, um, and Poirier was able to finish the fight, so he came out on top in that one, of course, this is for the BMF title, which is uh, the baddest motherfucker, um, and I mean, either of these two are definitely deserving of that title, because these guys, whenever they fight, it's always going to be entertaining. Poirier, you know, whether he's fighting McGregor, uh, even the fight against Charles was pretty entertaining, even though it ended pretty quick. I mean, their first fight was very entertaining uh, against Michael Chandler, who both of these guys have beat. That was very, those were very entertaining fights to watch. Uh, so either of these guys are very deserving of that title. Because both of these guys can take a beating. Both of these guys can can take some punches. Uh, so I'm expecting a war. I think everyone is. Uh, now the, the only downside to this fight is that even if, let's say, Poirier or Gaethje wins, uh, whoever wins, you would think they would get another title shot. But of course, they've already lost to Charles Oliveira, um, who's not the champion right now islam is but um i mean still like if they couldn't beat charles uh you know it's not looking too good <laughs> to see if they fight islam um but we'll see but uh, I, I gotta go with poirier in this fight um i think he'll learn from the last fight to check those calf kicks and those thigh kicks um, and even if he doesn't, even if he gets caught with uh, with weak legs or, or beat up legs into the fight, I think it'll go similar to how it went last time. Now, of course, with these two guys, one of them can always end up getting caught. Both of these fighters have insane power. Um, but I do think Poirier's going to win. I don't think Poirier's ever been knocked out that might be wrong I think he might have been knocked out like a long time ago uh, when he still had the buzz cut uh, but I other than that I don't think he's ever been knocked out of course he's been submitted but I don't think he's been knocked out uh, he is the favorite in this fight he's minus 145 Gaethje is plus 125 but uh, yeah it should be a great fight great card a lot of interesting fights um, like I said, interesting fights on the prelims as well. So, uh, very excited. I'm not going to lie. I thought this was a girl. Uh, sorry, CJ Vergara. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a girl. Um, I think there's only one. Yeah, wow. There's only one uh, women's fight on this card, uh, which is the first card of the entire, or the first fight of the entire card. And this, group, this woman is very heavily favored so that's interesting but um otherwise yeah let me know what you guys think will happen in these fights in this card ufc 291 should be a great event uh, let's quickly just look at the rankings um i don't know how quick it'll be because i'm not sure how quick it'll load but um but yeah let me know what you guys think will happen in these fights uh, if you or you know if your favorite fighter is fighting in this card, do you think they'll win? I know a lot of people love Tony Ferguson. I'm a pretty big Tony fan myself, but I I just can't uh, root or not. I 
I just can't give him the the win in this one. I just think he needs to retire. Anyways, like I said, let's quickly look at the rankings. Of course, Pantoja or Pantoja beat Moreno. I want to say about a month ago, maybe um, for the flyweight belt. Volk still the pound for pound number one. He's actually tied with John Jones, which makes sense. Um, of course, still the featherweight champion um, and Holloway. Yair, who he just beat, he's beat Holloway, Yair Ortega, the only fighters, I don't think he's beat Allen, I uh, could be wrong, and of course he hasn't faced Ilya Taporia, uh, which when that day comes will be a great fight, um, and of course lightweight is Islam Makashev, and behind him is Charles and Dustin and Justin Gaethje, and then Benil Dariush, who just lost to Charles, and then Michael Chandler, who's lost to, I believe, all three of these guys. Um, and then behind him, you have Fiziev and Gamrot Sarukian, who won his last fight. Dan Hooker, who's fallen pretty far down, but just beat Jalen Turner. Um, and then there's Jalen Turner at 12. Um, and then in the welterweight division, of course, Leon Edwards is still champ. Um, probably will fight either Colby or Bilal Muhammad next, or maybe Hamzad if Hamzad ever decides to fight. Um, and then, of course, Shavkat is on the rise. And then you have Stephen Thompson, Jeff Neal, Sean Brady, who just won his last fight against Michael Chiesa. Uh, that was a little while ago, I believe. I think he might have fought before that, so I could be wrong in saying that that was his last fight. Middleweight, of course, we have Adesanya, still champ. Um, of course, knocked out Peta. Uh, and then we have Drickus. Pajeda should be removed from here because I don't think he's ever going back down to middleweight. Uh, he's just way too big for that division. And I think the cut is, yeah, I think it just does too much to his body. Uh, Whitaker, who just lost to DDP. Um, so DDP, Adesanya will be pretty spicy championship uh, bout because they already have beef about the whole you're not a real African, you're not a, you know, whatever, I'm not going to get into that. Um, of course, Kenanier, a little bit iffy for him because he's getting pretty old. Well, he, he is pretty old, so, you know, who does he fight? Does he fight Whitaker, but Whitaker just lost? Does he fight Vittori, Sean Strickland? I mean, he could fight Sean Strickland, who won his last fight, uh, but who knows? And then, of course, light heavyweight is not Jamal Hill because he vacated it. I mean, I guess technically it is, uh, which is just really unfortunate to see. But um, number one is Yuri. And then we have Magomed Ankalev, Blahovic, Rakic, Krilov. A lot of, uh, lot of Eastern Europeans up, up in the top. But, uh, but yeah, and then heavyweight, of course, still John Jones. Uh, I would like to really see him fight. Pavlovich, I think they are going to make that fight happen uh, after Stipe fights John Jones. Um, well, I guess we'll have to see who wins. But uh, women's Alexa Grasso still pound for pound top ranking, especially after Nunez retired. And then we have uh, Zhang Wei Li, who is strawweight champ. Grasso is flyweight champ. And uh, I don't know why it's not popping up, but I believe Grasso is also bantamweight champ i might be wrong but it, um i don't know not popping up anyways or or it's just vacant um i think it's vacant because nunez um, isn't there anymore so anyways uh, just a quick run through of the rankings and uh the predictions for ufc 291 as i mentioned before let me know what you guys think will happen in this main card in this event like i said should be a great event as always, if you guys enjoyed watching the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It is very much appreciated if you do. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.